Stay Curious presented by QR Tiger. So hi Ben, in the last episode, we talked about what to expect with QR codes this 2023. And now we're diving in and um, we'll help marketers get even more inspired by showing them our rundown of the best QR code marketing campaigns from the past year. But before that, um, I want you to explain to them and tell them when you say marketers can add a digital dimension to their offline campaigns using QR codes, what do you mean by that exactly? And when we say offline ad or traditional ads, this means posters, of course, and not on um, any online ad. So these are traditional ads we're talking about. Right. So what we say in QR Tiger, uh, give digital dimension to your product and services. So it's, it's much more than just offline things right now we have seen QR codes being used also online offline everywhere right it has been in in television series it's been uh offline on posters it has been in so many different places that they can be used and that's i think also one of the interesting thing with QR codes that it can engage any kind of content to a different level so we say give a digital dimension to your products and services not just you know only you know your offline things it's a multi-channel approach, yeah? And then I think is the, the, the rich thing about a QR code that it can be used through different channels and, you know, interlink all those different channels in a very simple way. And that I think is the power when we say, give a digital dimension to your products and services. So also your advertisement, of course. And you're right. Um, it actually bridges the gap between offline and online ads. And it's more interactive that way because it's very personal for someone who scans it and then visits the website or the certain landing page that um, the QR code leads to. And so for um, before we get started, let's just get this out of the way, Ben, because people always compare QR codes with similar quote and quote technologies such as bar barcodes, NFC tags, RFID, and data matrix codes. We actually have um, in-depth blogs about it if um, our marketers want to learn more about it. But here in this podcast, um, we want you to uh, tell them how do they differ? How do, does QR code differ from these technology? And what do you think makes QR code stand out? Right. So all these technologies have a certain purpose that is similar in some way and different in a total other way, right? So it is really important to understand. They're not necessarily competitors from each other, right? So when I take RFID out of, out of things, that's something, you know, where there's near field communication, uh, similar like an NFC dev, right? These are things where you want to connect to something like a payment quick, or, you know, you want to open the door to a subway gate. Um, this is a very easy, simple way uh, to work with these kind of things. A QR code uh, can also be used for that. You can also scan and also a subway gate goes open, right? This is also possible. I mean, scan, you just show your QR code. It scans automatically that the gate and you go in. So these kind of things all can work together. It's not that one you know, excludes the other. Um, but of course, what are the benefits, for example, of QR codes in such kind of thing? A QR code can be quickly printed. It doesn't need any electricity technology. Uh, where an NFC deck, it's something you need to still stick to something, right? You need to make people aware that they need to put their phone near to it or what. So it comes with a very different logic. QR codes, people already in their head, when they see a QR code, they already have the reflex to understand that they need to scan something. Uh, RFID, it depends. If you didn't educate it to users, then people still need to understand that, okay, I can put my phone close to something and I can pay, for example, right? Or something will happen, a gate will open or something like that. So it comes all a little bit with the education part, also comes with the, the effectiveness of being able to print something, right? And of course, the QR codes, you can store more data, you can open website links if you have a, a, a barcode. So a, a QR code was invented to take all the negative things of a barcode away right because the barcode is single single dimension code right 1d uh and if one is scratched then it will not work anymore a qr code when it's scratched it will still work so these kind of things uh made that qr codes had some benefits and i think that these benefits are uh like i say you can use it online you can use it offline uh, so every technology has their specific field where they are better in, I think. And I think QR codes are very versatile and have a very wide uh, field where they can be beneficial in for companies. So again, this is not uh, one technology against another. This is something where everything can be complementary. And that's really important to understand between NFC, uh, RFID, single barcode, QR codes, you know, any, any of these technologies. Right? 
important to understand they're not competitors. And that's something that most people still not 100% understand always. Right, they can totally co coexist. And um, it's just that um, QR codes are very straightforward with their use and people have become very familiar with that um, technology already, especially with the last three years. And um, so before we begin with, um, with the rundown of the best 2022 QR code campaign, um, I have to ask you, Ben, I'm really curious, What's the best 2022 QR code campaign you've ever seen? And um, I know there's been a lot of innovative QR code uses in the past year, but what stands out to you the most? I personally liked the one of Burger King when it was on the television, when the QR code was flipping around and you need to scan it. I think that was fun. And then Coinbase kind of did that also on the, you know, on, on the, on the Super Bowl, right? I mean, similar logic, you know, this QR code flips around, you have to scan it. It's engaging. That was definitely one of those campaigns that I did like. Uh, there are many more, right? I mean, there there has been many campaigns that I think had different edges. Um, but I like the fact when a QR code becomes engaging, where it has something fun, where people can, you know, have a little engagement with it. And that's, I think, what is what is the beneficial thing when it's in marketing, right? Where how can it be engaging? How can we actually do something more with people? How did any QR code become a gate to a whole new world? Yeah, um, the the one for Coinbase totally stood out with me as well because it's a bit nostalgic as well because it reminds you of that DVD standby screen before where you just uh, but and instead of a DVD logo, of course, you change it with a QR code and it's very um, engaging, like you said, and very interactive. And that's why I heard that their website crashed right after that ad. And it's very, very effective. So now we'll show you the yep. best QR code campaigns from 2022. And you will rate each one of them, Ben, from one to 10, with 10 being the highest. And so let us know what makes it work and how it can still be improved if you think that applies. So let's get started. Okay. The yeah, first, let's start. All right. The first one is the sundial QR code from eMart in South Korea. These are positioned and located so they could be um, between the hours of 12 noon and 1 p.m. So these are three dimensional QR codes. And thanks to shadows cast by the Midnight Sun, anyone who scanned it was given a special 25% discount code in store. So what do you think about this? Yeah, for me, uh, I will rate it even a 10 on 10. Why? I find it's an extremely innovative idea. I think it's great that people uh, are being brought within the store under when, when there is a, you know, down hours and you know that people can scan on certain hours of the day this i think is extremely innovative also to build such qr code i don't think was was easy right so it's i'm sure the marketing went way beyond the qr code itself i'm sure many people are have been talking about this um so that i think was 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 why it was such a great idea it reminds me of our multi-rail qr code our multi-rail qr code is also a qr code where based on type you can give different uh discounts on different time slots that you decide and i think this as in my eyes is extremely innovative to play with the sun the shadow the QR code the time and actually combining it with the discount for the retail behind i think that's super innovative right and it also creates the fear of missing out for people who um, are not available during these times so that word of mouth is very very effective for people to catch it and um, make sure that they're already there to scan the code between these available times, which is 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. only. And let's go to the second one. How about this recycling QR code by Recycle Now, which is a huge QR code filled with materials that people often for forget to put in their recycling bins. This has been installed outside Birmingham New Street Station. So how would you rate it then? I'm going to give it an 8 on 10. I think it's also very innovative uh, to make brand awareness uh, with the QR codes and by giving a dimension to it by all the material that people throw on the street, right? Uh, and, you know, let people be curious to scan this QR code. So I think, I think it's a great concept. Uh, I think it's also not so easy, I think, to build this QR code. They must have done a lot of trial and error to make it work. Um, and again, this is not just only about people scanning this QR code, it's also coming in the news, being newsworthy, letting people know about 
the the recycling of you know the things that you throw and that you actually don't need to throw it on the ground but you should throw it in a garbage bin bin right so this is again a very innovative engaging uh campaign that allows people to be aware of you know the thing that they want to promote within the qr code and it's not even just about their promotion because the qr code and its materials are already a statement within itself so it will t- totally stay with the people who have seen it and um on to the next one would be the Easter Egg Hunt QR code by Haribo, the gummy bear company. And um, this is the Haribo Easter weekend virtual egg hunt where they got people to scan these QR codes to get hunting on their website. So how would you rate this event? I think this is also a very interesting concept. Uh, I would rate it probably also around like, I don't give it a seven. So this is a little bit uh, a campaign that works with AR, right? Where people need to scan, they need to go in their own garden and they need to find those eggs within a phone. So this is where QR codes and AR go hand in hand. Um, I like the concept. I think it's, it's a good one. Um, it's also again, engaging people. It's engaging children, right? Which is also, of course, target audience of Haribo. Um, and I think it also reminds me a little bit of Pokemon Go, right? Where people need to go to certain things and start doing certain things on certain locations, right? So this has a little bit of that, although that this is not linked to a location specific, but most people's garden where they can do the egg hunt. I like the concept. I think it's, it's, it's again, something where, and I think we'll see, we'll see more of that as well, uh, AR and QR codes going hand in hand. Yes, as you've mentioned in the previous podcast, uh that we will see more of augmented reality and QR code marketing campaigns this year. And then this is just like a beta version if you think about it really. And I know that more marketers out there will be create more um, imaginative and innovative uh, augmented reality campaigns for this year and beyond. And to the next right. one, this would be the firework packaging QR code. And firework shop owner Brian Nelson put this video QR codes on his product packaging and it shows how the fireworks looks like when they're lit. It's actually very innovative for me and customers can then customize their firework shows according to the ones they like based on the videos. So what do you think about this, Ben? How would you rate this? I'm gonna give it also a seven on 10. I uh, think this is a very good example of giving a digital dimension to your products and services, fireworks, right? Uh, How does it look? You scan, you see YouTube video, how it looks. Uh, would be good if that would be a call for action a little bit more on the QR code that I think is something that I misses on the packaging. But I, I like the concept of, you know, how many people go to buy something where you don't know the effect or what you're going to get. And with this QR code in a very simple way, you scan it in the store, you understand what it's going to do. And that I think is the great benefit of adding a QR code and fireworks. Sure, this is again something that can be perfectly working with a QR code and doing something more. And it's offering that more that that I'm sure that will make that that fireworks sold much more than if it wouldn't have a QR code. Right, because you already set the expectations to the customers and at least they would know exactly what they're buying, especially as something as short lived as QR codes. So they would know exactly how it differs from its competitors. So this is a really good one. And for this next campaign, it's more recent, actually. It's QR to Qatar by Adidas. For um, as the official partner of the FIFA World Cup 2022, this QR code revealed a short film ad featuring Bollywood superstar Ranveer Singh. The film displayed a QR code that, once scanned, allowed sports fanatics to join the raffle and get a chance to win an all-expense four-day paid trip to the FIFA World Cup in Qatar. So how innovative is this? How would you rate this, Ben? I'm going to give it a 6 or 10 or even a 7, something there in between six and a half why i don't think it's that innovative but it's again it's it, it bridges the you know an online campaign and doing something where people can enter a raffle so yeah a qr code in this case have just been like a, a door where people enter the raffle right uh, so that level i think the qr codes with all the flags that was fun i think that's again something doing something more so that's the thing that i do like where they try to customize it where they try to do something more um i think adidas could have done something more but again this this is not a bad campaign this is something that did work on a huge event right i guess on such huge events you don't want to take too many risks you want to do something that has a proven record and a raffle is a proven record of something that works people still like it today and will still love it probably within 100 years from now so yeah not a bad campaign uh for such huge events and i think yeah it's all right 
Uh, but you're right. Um, something a big brand as Adidas could have come up with a more innovative campaign. But yes, this will do. And um, in terms of environmentally sensitive QR code campaigns, Ben, we're going to this next one, which is very interesting for me. This is the world's largest QR code. Um, this is from brewing company Yuengling partnered up with Chalfant Family Farms to create the world's largest QR code in a field. So it's made from live crops. The QR code leads to their Stars and Stripes campaign where they honor veterans. So what do you think about it, Ben? How will you read this? I'm gonna give it a I'm gonna give it a seven on ten. I, I do like, of course, to to build this was a, a big a big job and a small job, right? I can imagine it took a lot of preparation to really understand how to build this on that scale, right? Uh, I do like that it has a social dimension, so it honors veterans, right? I think that's nice as well. Um, so it brings different things together. And, you know, of course, building a huge QR code like this, the largest QR code in the world right now ever being built, that definitely gonna create eyeballs, right? So that to that level, I think that was, was, was not bad. They could have done something more, I guess, maybe with it so that people actually could visit it. Uh, I don't know, maybe have a, like a big balloon going up so you could actually see that QR code from up in the sky. Uh, I don't I don't think they did that. But I think it, it's, it's again showing that, you know, a QR code is a great way to grab attention and they did it right. So on that level, great, well done. I think it's, it's a nice campaign. Yeah, especially if it's probably made to the Guinness Book of World Records and um, you'll get more people talking about it. But you're right, they could have made a maze out of it or I don't know, because it's very um, a sensitive form of QR code. So maybe they also had like a limited uh, resource for it. And uh, on to the next one. This would be the NBA 2K22 mobile QR codes. And this was released for the Foundation East and Foundation West set by putting up posters with QR codes across the USA. There were six unique QR codes of this one located in six different cities and it requires fans to work together both offline and online. So when a player completes all six QR codes, they will be rewarded with exclusive collectible cards. So what do you think? Ben, how would you rate this? I'm going to give it an, an 8 on 10. I, I like the, the concept that uh, fans need to work together, that it's, you know, uh, all over the USA, that it's something that you need to collect. It has all the good ingredients in it of a good campaign in my eyes. And I, I think it's, it's definitely, again, a campaign that created quite a bit of brand awareness. If you scan it, you will see, of course, more information. So I, I think it's it's something that I did like and I'm sure it was successful, right? So such kind of campaigns, again, we will see more as well. This is a QR code where there is a social dimension behind it. And that social dimension, I think, was the power of its success. Right. And so it's not really just about the product, but also building communities, which just, just goes beyond what the campaign is all about. It touches uh, different people and gets them gets more people talking about it. So that's really just very innovative and beautiful for that campaign. And for this uh, next one, this is the FIFA World Cup QR codes. And this is from Budweiser as they release a QR code with an action-packed video featuring football superstars Messi, Neymar, and Sterling. So they also had QR codes on billboards, other video ads, and on their product packaging. And the lucky fans that scan it will get a chance to win signed memorabilia from these idols and a ticket to the World Cup. How would you rate this, man? Uh, this, I think, is, again, uh, a great example of an omni-channel campaign uh, where they not just put a QR code on the product packaging, but also on posters on different places. So, and this, I think, is also the success of this campaign that it was not just on one thing, but on many things. And of course, working with superstars as Neymar, Messi, definitely will attract people to scan it, right? And a company as Budweiser did that on that level, of course, when it comes to the FIFA World Cup. Uh, good campaign. I, like I say, I give it a, a seven on 10 uh, uh, because I think it could still be more original, but you know, it, it did what it needed to do and it was functioning. A little bit similar like what Adidas did in some way, but still different, yeah. All right, and uh, yeah, it could be it could be more, and there has to be something like that. They can even use a social media QR code for that as well, Ben, for these uh, right. for these uh, football stars. But then um, I think they wanted to be to be safe as well because there's a lot of people watching FIFA and they want to accommodate everyone. And so for the next uh, campaign would be fashion show QR code. And this is made by Christy Lau. This actually made rounds around social media 
as a BA Fashion Student Central at St. Martin presented her designs through QR code QR codes. So the three cube QR codes were worn by models when they walked down the runway during the school's fashion show. And when scanned, the QR codes lead to Instagram where the filters with her designs were found. People actually criticized it and they said that this fashion show should just have been an email because they just featured QR codes and that people sh should have just gone to her Instagram to check it. What, what do you think about this, Ben? I still like it. I'm going to give it an 8 on 10. Why? Because on, fa on fashion shows, everybody's sitting there with their smartphone anyway in front of their eyes, right? To record whatever is happening. There's very few people that look at a fashion show without a smartphone in front of their eyes. Uh, so QR code was the ideal media for people to connect with it. Uh, it gave it social dimension. I'm sure it's get a lot of attention in the news by doing this. St. Martin's is a place that comes with innovation and tries to cross different things and sure this this i think is is a, is a great concept um of course this is not the usual fashion show that people are used to but that, i think that's also part of fashion fashion is about crossing bridges between clothing technology and definitely to in the in, in in today's time and day people you know technology fashion everything goes in hand in hand anyway so great that she did something that she tried something yeah i i like it I actually like the boldness of this project as well, Ben, because um, this is actually the first time that a QR code has been literally worn on the catwalk. So it's really beautiful that um, people have been talking about it and it's actually very divisive, which is um, actually what you want when people want to discuss and go if you want to go viral with your design as a fashion designer on the internet. Okay, the next one that we have here, Ben, is a Super Bowl QR code. This actually went viral during the Super Bowl ads because of course it's a very nostalgic ad showing the like a DVD screensaver style of the Coinbase's QR code which led people to actually scan the QR code and get a $15 discount on their website. So what do you think about this innovative QR code campaign? I think that was totally awesome. I think it was great that uh, people could, uh, you know, engage in, in the Super Bowl with the QR code. I've also found it pretty bold, right? So I'm going to give it an uh, 8 or 10. Uh, it was simple, it was bold, and it did what it needed to do. Even the servers of Coinbase crashed because people scanned so many times within a very short period of time. Um, it was not the first time that we saw a moving chocolate over a screen. Burger King did that as well on a television ad, but I did like the concept very much. I think it was something that, you know, uh, and that's what the Super Bowl is about, you know, people remembering you and I'm sure they get lots of people signing up because, you know, they get $15 discount. So they reach their goal. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I learned that Coinbase actually paid nearly $14 million for this ad. So it was totally worth it. And then it even uh, surpassed the record for the number of average scans in a minute. So they totally made full use of the people's attention during the Super Bowl. That's totally genius. And um, maybe some people can take, some workers can even uh, take inspiration from that on how to make full use of an ad, even if it's super expensive. This one is one of the best examples of that on how to make full use of a QR code um, in an online ad. So for this one as well, for uh, the next one would be Love, Death and Robots QR Code from Netflix. So this one would use QR codes to engage viewers and gift them with free artworks that can be downloaded as an image or minted as an NFT. It's like a reward for those who watch the show. But what do you think about this um, QR code campaign? I'm going to give it a 10 on 10. I do like that it has uh, a QR code not only offline, but online as well, right? So it really gives a digital dimension to the online, from online to online and on offline to online. Uh, it's great to reward users. So it makes them, when they watch uh, the series, it makes it more engaging. And it also makes people, you know, builds a community around it, right? People are talking about it. It's It creates a whole different level of a, watching a series. It's not just you watch a series, but you actually focus, you want to get something. It becomes, it gamifies the whole series a little bit. And that I do like. I think it's it's great, great concept for doing an ad, but also to engage the viewer. Yeah, exactly, Ben. It gets people talking about it long after the series, the hype of the series is over. So this is a totally uh, new concept where it's like you reward your audience with a really nice um, NFT or something like that. So marketers can also get some inspiration from that. And on to the next one would be the Jersey QR codes from the University of Central Florida. So they actually got their athletes to wear 
their QR codes on their jerseys and it led to their um, bio on the University of Central Florida's website and also their social media pages to get their followers to be more inspired with their stories and to follow them on social media as well. So what do you think about this campaign then? I'm going to give it a 10 on 10. I do like the concept that the players become interactive. So it's not just a player. You can scan them. You can see, uh, follow them on social media. You can engage with them. Uh, it gives the whole game also a different level again, right? So instead of watching a game, uh, and this is actually a really good example how QR codes really are used to its maximum. How can a sport event become something more? How can we make these players uh, part of the marketing, part of the engagement, part of the fan base, right? So this, how, how, this is, I think, is something that is we will see more in the future. Uh, seeing that a, a player is number 13, that's great. But having a QR code where you can scan and maybe, you know, give a comment or whatever, it makes it just way more fun, right? Well done. I think that's definitely one something that we will see more and more in the future as well. Yeah, it's a nice concept because it gets more people rooting for them because now they know their backstories and it gets people inspired. And also I can see like how not even just athletes can do this, like wearing their QR codes. Even some influencers can do that or some companies can actually um, hire people to be like walking ads and provide like a QR code on their shirts. The limit is really their imagination. It's fun, it's engaging, and it's very humanizing for um, for the people with the wearing QR codes as well. And to the next one, there will uh, this is the drone QR code made by the popular game Halo. And this one um, was seen floating above the store, um, skies of Austin, Texas, and people got curious and those scanners were led to the trailer of the new show. So what do you think about this man? I'm going to give it an 8 on 10. Uh, I do like and that the drones are used in the sky, that there is an, 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 an advertisement in the sky, a light show, you could you could call it. And they use different technologies together, right? They use uh, QR codes within it so people can actually engage with it. It's not just a show that you watch like a fireworks, but it's actually something that you can have a message engage with on your phone. I like the concept very much. This is also not the first time that it's been done. Uh, we saw it in Shanghai as well. Uh, but yeah, great concept, definitely something that stands out, makes the whole, uh, you know, surroundings and far beyond talking about such kind of event, right? So, well done, this is definitely something that I believe we will see more and more in the future. And also, as more advanced those drones will become, the more spectacular uh, these light shows will be. So, this will be definitely something we're going to see in the future. Yeah, yeah it's totally worth it because um, even people who are not fans of Halo will ask, like, what is that? Because it's out in the open and more people will be talking about it um, even for like the whole year like us because it really went viral and um, it's a totally innovative for QR code drones and um, to the next one Ben and the last one that we have here will be the Marvel TV show QR code this one showed um, Moon Knight, Miss Marvel and She-Hulk 20 at low QR codes where the audience were rewarded with free digital copies of some Marvel comics what do you think about this Ben? I'm going to give it a 9 on 10. I do like that this gives a digital dimension uh, to the series as well. So people can, it's not only offline to online, but here is QR codes online to online. And it's, you know, it engages people. It makes them uh, feel that they can win something. It makes them feel like there is something more. And it's again, that's what QR codes can offer. It's a gate to something more. And that's exactly what we are living in. We're living in a time where people not just want to be Oh, somebody who watched, but we want pe people want to engage with something. They want to know more. They want to get more. And this is actually, again, a great example of that. I, I like it very much. Yeah. This is actually a really good style of like an Easter egg hunt for the audiences. It's very, very interactive. And I wish like more people would actually do this on their uh, TV series and even music videos. Because last year, there was this Korean pop idol, Jungkook, and partnered with Charlie Foot. They made a music video and it went viral. People really got to talking about it. And at the end of the video, they have this um, QR code that led to the website where they sell their album. So it was very, very effective. And I just hope that more people will make full use of QR codes this way for TV series or ads or music videos as well. Just the limit is your imagination. It's really up to you. And to hit two birds with one stone for that interactive campaign. And so I hope that our marketers were able to get inspired and take something from this um, discussion right now. And if you have any questions about how to create a really effective 
launch your cold marketing campaign for 2023, let us know in the comments below and uh, let us know your feedback as well. And thank you for tuning in to stay curious. This has been Crystal and Ben. Thanks for listening, you guys. Bye. Thank you so much. See you. Bye. Thank you.